Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Brisky Zoom Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are going to do a very casual chit chatty video talking about my booktube experience. So I should probably preface this by saying that I really have no plans or intentions for this video. I don't have any talking points mapped out or anything like this. So we are just kind of going on a journey and we're going to see where it takes us. But I will say that the video idea for this has definitely evolved because originally it started out as a vlog style behind the scenes look, kind of like a week in my life as a part-time content creator because I was noticing a few other booktubers doing this, but they were more full-time content creators. And I was like, okay, well, where is the part-time representation? Because I feel like more often than not, we are not making full-time livings doing this and so we have other things that we have to do outside of the home and so I kind of wanted to bring that representation right also really quickly if you are noticing light fluctuations it's because my window is right here and the sun is going in and out behind the clouds and the trees so I really apologize about that so I was going to do kind of that vlog style behind the scenes but then I also thought it would be really interesting to more talk about my booktube experience and everything that I have to do in order to maintain my channel to give a realistic kind of idea of what that looks like for me. And I've also had some people kind of ask me questions about my booktube experiences and the challenges and things like that. So that is kind of where we ended up with this video today. We're going to go ahead and just jump right in. And I think the best place to start would be for you to kind of get an understanding of what my life is like outside of booktube and how I have to fit booktube in. I work full time outside of the home in higher academia. And then immediately after work every single day, I go to a CrossFit class. So I do not get home until just after six every Every single night. When I get home, it is then immediately time for me to start cooking dinner for myself and my husband. And then after dinner is cooked, we sit down and we watch an episode of whatever show it is that we are watching at the time. And that is kind of like our wind down, decompressed, spend time together kind of time during the night. We are typically done with the episode between, I want to say like 7.30 and 8 o'clock. It just kind of depends on how long dinner has taken me to cook. And then once dinner is done, we then go take our dogs for a walk. It happens every single night, rain or shine, no matter matter what the weather, they have to go on their nightly walk. They will not let us get away with not walking them. So it is only when we are done with the walk, when I am actually able to even contemplate focusing on anything else that I might need to do. And typically what I need to do is edit videos for booktube. And every single weeknight I have roughly maybe an hour of good editing time before I have to start like cleaning up the after dinner mess and winding down and going to bed. Now, if you are a content creator on YouTube, you will know that an hour is not necessarily enough time to get anything significant done, especially if you are a tight editor like me. And what I mean by that is that I am literally editing out every single um, like, verbalized pause, every single mistake, anything like that is edited out of a video. And there could be multiple examples of that in just one minute of a video. And so because of that, I might have only a 20 minute raw footage video, but a 20 minute raw footage video could take me upwards of two to three hours just to edit from start to finish because of how tightly I'm editing it. And additionally, if I am editing a video that has a lot of external things necessary, like if I have to upload pictures of books or stats or things like that, that just increases the length of time that it takes me to edit. So an hour every single night is not necessarily that great, especially because it's never an uninterrupted hour. I've never just purely focused on editing for that hour. There is always some type of distraction that is happening during that hour. And to be quite truthful, by 8.30 at night, my brain is not operating at full capacity. My brain is not sitting there wanting to edit. It is a struggle oftentimes to get myself to concentrate on editing. So editing at night is a really big struggle, but I have to do it in order to maintain a two video a week schedule. Now that does mean that the weekend is my only filming time. I only have Saturdays and Sundays to film. I typically only film one of those days, not both, unless there are multiple things that I need to film, then I might film on both days, but it's typically one or the other, depending on what is going on. And those days are also heavy editing days. Now in terms of actually filming, it is a whole process, right? So first I have to get ready to film. I have to put on my makeup. I have to do my hair and all of that good stuff. And I would say from start to finish, that takes me roughly around 45 minutes just to get ready to film. I also have to come into my office and try to set up the best that I can. I'm putting my camera in different places. I'm positioning my lights. I'm playing with the brightness of my lights and all that stuff. And this is not even including the planning process that went into filming the videos. Like for example, if 
if I'm doing my book of the month prediction video. I have to actually sit down and research the predictions that I want to put in that video. Same with my new releases. So there is definitely a level of preparation that goes into filming almost every single video. One thing I didn't mention is that I'm also a grad student. I am halfway through a 10 course grad program and it's a little bit more on the intense side because all of the courses are only eight weeks long and so there is a lot packed into eight weeks. A lot of the time when I'm at work if I'm not actively working I'm working on my grad school work and I will take breaks when I need to so like right now because everything is so crazy at my job I'm literally from the moment I sit down at seven to the moment I leave at four I'm barely able to leave my desk and so because of that I have opted to take at least the next term off possibly the next two terms in a row off and I don't want to I want to get this grad program over and done with because it is severely affecting my mental health but also I feel like taking a break is what's going to be best for my mental health especially when I know that I'm not going to have any time to do the work to the quality that I want to do it and the only reason why I'm mentioning that is because for the most part during the work day I don't have any time to focus on booktube in any capacity I don't have time to do the prep for the videos I don't have time to edit the video so it all falls after work or on the weekends and so on a normal filming day I'm taking about 45 minutes to just get ready and then of course the additional setup time to make sure that everything is in place where I need it to go and then I'm sitting down and filming I'm typically filming two videos every single weekend and full transparency filming is not really a quick and easy process for me because I find that my mouth and what I want to say is kind of working faster than my brain my brain is trying to catch up so I'm constantly struggling over my words I'm making mistakes for the most part I would say that on average every single video that I film is at least 40 minutes of raw footage and you will notice that a lot of the videos you are watching on my channel are not 40 minutes they're probably closer to 20 minutes or less that's because half of the video is just me messing stuff up that I have to edit out and that's okay that's just part of my process that's just how it is if you consider the amount of time that it takes me to get ready to film a video then the actual filming process you are looking roughly around three hours or more in the mornings of the filming day just to get that completed I know that if I have a 40 minute raw footage video I can be expecting to edit that video for at least I want to say four hours at a minimum now I get it I know a lot of people are wondering like why does it take you so long to edit maybe it's because I'm inefficient at it I don't know but I do know that because I tightly edit videos and because I also rewatch it at least once maybe even twice to make sure that I've gotten everything and there's typically also other things that I'm adding into it like the pictures like the sound effects all of that stuff it is a very time-consuming and laborious process there's also back-end things that have to go into uploading a video right like when I upload a video into YouTube I also have to create the thumbnail for that video I also have to go in and link all of the books that I talked about or any creators that I talked about or any past videos that I talk about so finalizing a video does not end when the editing is done there's also back-end administrative functions that have to go into it and on the weekends just because I'm not at work doesn't mean I am not working in some capacity because the weekend is also when I have to catch up on all of the house stuff that has been neglected and I have to do all of the errands and the appointments and stuff that I haven't otherwise been able to do so I can't just focus on filming I can't just focus on editing I have to do everything else in between all of the other stuff that is going on so I would say that the time commitment for booktube during an average week I can probably expect to dedicate at least 15 hours a week to booktube but my hope is that I can grow the channel that I can grow the community because that is why I'm here and so that's why I do put so much work and effort into it and I genuinely love being on booktube and being a part of the booktube community and this year I feel so fortunate to kind of make other booktube content creator friends I feel like my community of subscribers is growing and I'm getting to know a lot more of y'all but outside of like Sarah from Sarah's nightstand and one or two other people I feel like my actual community of booktube content creators is rather small I was very very grateful when I was invited to participate as a moderator for the amazing readathon and things like that I feel like it gave me a really big opportunity to actually get to know and befriend more booktube content creators it does help to have that friend group of other content creators that you can rely on that you can ask questions to that you can bounce ideas back and forth and that you can be a part of the things that they're creating like their readathons and their patreon so I'm very very thankful this year to kind of grow my community of other booktube content creators and so between the engagement that I'm getting from people watching my videos and the friendships that I'm building within the community with both subscribers and other content creators that is ultimately what sustains me and it keeps me going because creating videos in such a niche part of a YouTube community it can feel very discouraging at times it took a while for my channel to get even 
even to the point where it is today, which is still very, very small. And you want to know that people are watching and interacting with your videos. That's just natural. Now I'm not doing this for a million YouTube subscribers. In fact, I personally myself don't even really follow or support super large creators. In fact, I think the channel that I'm subscribed to that has the most subscribers that is booktube related is Becca and the books and she has about 47,000. I don't think I would really want to follow anybody super larger than her because you just become a very small fish in a very big pond. You know what I mean? Since I don't really care to watch super large channels, I don't think that I would ever really want to become one because I also think that I would lose the personal aspects to being a content creator, right? So I'm definitely not doing this to build a large following. But at the same time, I don't want to just sit here talking to myself in a camera lens, right? And so when you're first starting a channel and you don't necessarily have a foot in the door, right? Maybe you don't really have any booktube connections. Maybe you're not coming here from another social media platform. A lot of people are coming here from TikTok and so their channels are growing rapidly because they already have that following on TikTok. So if you don't have your foot in the door already, it can be very slow, tedious growth process. And that is also true if your channel doesn't match the aesthetics that people are looking for. This is another point that I mentioned in that booktube slash book talk video that I made. There's a specific aesthetic and it kind of equates to cozy slash bright, clean, white aesthetic. These are similar things that you're seeing in a lot of lifestyle content. And so you're seeing that a lot of the popular vlogs have this aesthetic. And at the same time, either instead of or in combination with the aesthetic, they're also looking for wild, wacky, inventive ideas. A lot of people, I feel like their inclination is to reinvent the wheel with regard to booktube. So if you're not coming up with and creating these very outrageous one-off video ideas, if you're not making super unique creative content, and if you're not providing the aesthetic that they're looking for, I have found that it can be a lot more difficult to grow your channel. And also in addition to that, cross-posting. Another point that I mentioned in that booktube slash book talk video, one of the major things that you could possibly do to help the growth of your channel is to cross post, especially on a platform like TikTok, where it seems a lot easier to get your content out there. And so if you don't necessarily have the time, the talent, the skill to be cross posting all of the time, you're also losing some of the traffic that you might otherwise get to your channel. So there are a lot of things that really go into how quickly and how fast your channel is growing. And so when you're first starting out, it can be very overwhelming. It can be very discouraging. When I first originally started this channel, I knew absolutely nothing about creating a booktube channel and I certainly knew nothing about editing. Editing was the biggest hurdle that I had to overcome. And even today when I have been increasing the quality of my videos and I have been improving my editing and all of that stuff, it's still a very slow growth process for a lot of reasons because I'm not cross posting, because I'm not trying to make these crazy wacky one-off videos that might be entertaining but not necessarily substantive or informative because I'm not really catering to this very curated aesthetic that a lot of people like. I'm coming on here, I'm being real, I'm being loud, I'm being opinionated, I'm being messy. I might even curse because I love to curse. I try to keep it off my channel just because I know that there are people that watch my videos that don't appreciate cursing. But let me assure you all that in real life, fuck is one of my favorite words. That's just me on my channel. A lot of my videos might be a little bit chaotic, kind of like this one because I didn't come in with a plan. Some of my videos also might be chaotic because the sun is doing its own thing or maybe my camera is doing something weird. Maybe the lighting is just terrible. I don't know. But there is definitely a lack of curation with the videos that I film on my channel just because I am doing what I can with the time and the bandwidth and the knowledge that I have. And I'm mentioning this because it's all a genuine part of the booktube experience. It would be very disingenuous of me to say that I didn't care if my channel grew or not. Now, I don't check my subscribers every single day. I can probably go weeks at a time without checking because I don't want it to be about the subscriber number. I want it to be about the engagement that I'm getting with y'all. But there are still moments every now and then where I will notice where the growth of my channel has maybe stagnated and it is not really growing at the rate that it used to or something like that. And it makes me question, what am I doing wrong? What could I be doing better? These are all very real questions that I feel like a small booktube creator is going to ask themselves. But overall, in general, I am extremely proud of where this channel has gone in the past two years since I came back. And I hope that it only gets better. And that is where I am today with my booktube experience. And I kind of wanted to just bring all this up because over the past couple of weeks, I felt very disconnected from the booktube community. And it has nothing to do with anything that the booktube community has done. It has been all me. I've mentioned this in a couple of videos. I don't want to get too terribly in depth about it just because it is my job. But like I said, I work for higher education. And in December of last year, we got a pretty big bombshell. They were talking about 
you know, budget cuts and a lot of restructuring. And throughout this year, we have seen a lot of restructuring come to pass. The team that I was on was disbanded and we were all kind of moved to different areas, doing the same jobs, but we were moved to different supervisors, different areas. There have been a lot of changes in that regard. And then recently, one of my current team members left and that left a hole in our coverage. And so that meant all of her students came to me. So I am currently assisting about 700 students at this time for the upcoming semester. I'm barely able to leave my desk just trying to get everything that I need to get done done. It's not going to stop until after the start of the spring semester. And unfortunately, because of that, because it takes so much of my brain power and it takes so much of my energy, I haven't been able to put as much time and attention and thought and detail into my booktube videos. And there have been noticeable gaps in content. Like for the month of October, I wasn't even able to film my October new release video because I wasn't going to be able to film and edit that in time and also still get other videos up on time that I wanted to do. And I've also not been able to keep up with comments like I normally have. Like I am caught up on comments, but I'm not able to keep up with them as they come in. Like I normally am able to, I'm having to go back and react to them or reply to them. You know what I mean? And I'm definitely not as active in some of the patron discords that I'm a part of. I love supporting the smaller creators that I have built friendships with. So I love being part of their discord and their community. And I haven't really been able to be active in that. I also feel like I wasn't even as present and active in my own Slayer Fest discord as I wanted to be. That didn't go quite the way that I expected, not just because of what was happening in my personal and my work life, but also because I ended up kind of doing everything on my own for that. And that wasn't necessarily expected. And my bandwidth has just been absolutely nothing. And unfortunately, BookTube has kind of taken the hit for that. And I've been trying to maintain it the best of my ability. And I've been trying to make it so nobody notices and nobody said anything to me, but I feel it. Like the past couple of days, for example, I hardly was able to edit at all. Um, I had to do the bulk of my editing yesterday in prayer that it could get up today. And luckily it did, but because I can go days without really doing anything booktube related, that makes me feel distance from it. And I hate that. I want to be a consistent booktube content creator. I pride myself on my reliability and my dependability. And I want to follow through on my promises. I don't want to be a content creator that says I'm going to do something and that I don't follow through. It's one of the reasons why I'm always trying to like recap my TBRs to you, because I want you to see that when I set my TBR, I'm actively trying. I want to be that content creator that you can rely on. And I also want to be the content creator that gives you the truth and is transparent and tells you my feelings on certain things, whether it be about a book, whether it be about something in the booktube community, like that video that I did all about book buying habits. You know what I mean? All of that stuff. I want to be that transparent, that consistent, that honest, reliable booktube content creator. And so that's where this comes in. So this was 100% ramble, guys. Like I said, I had no talking points coming into this. I had really no end goal in mind. I had no intention other than to be full, transparent, and honest with y'all about what I have to do in order to create content, what is currently going on in life, and why I might not be as present as I otherwise would like to be. And trust me, I do. I want to build that community. I want to be more present. And there might be an opportunity for that to happen a little bit later on down the years. So stay tuned for more information about that during Bookmas. I am so excited about Bookmas, y'all. I have a lot of great ideas and I really hope to see y'all there. I have 25 videos planned and whether or not I'm going to be able to film, edit, upload them every single day is anybody's guess. But you will be getting 25 Bookmas videos, whether they are in order or every day or not. And I'm really excited about it. I really appreciate all of you who continue to come back and watch my channel. I very much appreciate all of you who choose to engage with me on my channel. I very much appreciate all of you who come to my sprints and engage with me that way. I'm very appreciative of everybody who has made this such an amazing experience and made me learn and do things that I never thought that I was able to do. It's all just been so great. There are definitely some lower moments, but for the most part, it is all positive. All right, I think that's it, y'all. I think that I have for sure talked long enough. I really hope that you appreciated this chatty ramble. I, of course, would love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below or if you've made it to the end of this video and you yourself are not feeling chatty because I'm sure that I chatted enough for most of us just go ahead and leave me a simple heart emoji down below to let me know that you are here and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already I typically post two videos a week one on Wednesdays one on Sundays and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms which you can always find linked down below along with any books I might feature in a video until next time y'all